everyone and welcome back why is it so bright it's fine i think it'll be fine fingers crossed this video is short i say this every time but then i have like 50 minutes of raw footage but in this video i want to talk about the top 10 series that i want to get to in 2021 i got the year right so this is basically my tbr for 2020 2021 i just had to mess up i had to mess up i'm not gonna do a reading goals video but i have one big goal for next year and i feel like i'll expand on this in my january tbr but my only goal i say only but it's a pretty big goal my goal for 2021 is to finish every single book on my physical tbr so i want all the books on my shelves read by the end of the year and i have a few exciting themed reading vlogs for that so be hyped for that so yeah let's talk about 10 series that i want to get to if i get to all my physical tbr and everything goes as planned i will be reading all these anyway but i wanted to do a top 10 series that i want to get to in the next year anyway just to hold myself accountable and i might do like a punishment situation if i haven't read it all these books by the end of the year i have six sff adult fantasy books and then four young adult fantasy books to talk about so without any further ado let's get into it i don't know what's up with the peace signs i am sorry the first one i feel like i talked about this recently but i've owned these books for so long and i haven't talked about them in a while but <laughs> i just hit myself in the face but it's kings of the wild and bloody rose which are the first two books in i don't know if this series has a name what interested me from the get-go is that i love books that are finished in themselves and then they have spin-offs but like characters from the first book show up in this book and that's basically what this is these books are generational so like in this first book we follow a band of mercenaries that disbanded but they have to get back together get the band back together because one of their members child has gone missing so they have to get the van back together to find that child and i've heard this is very D, &D inspired which i wouldn't pick up on those nuances but i know a lot of people love D, &D and will love this then the sequel bloody rose follows the daughter that they're trying to save but now she is called bloody rose and she just sounds badass but we don't follow her we follow a bard a sapphic bard which is why i want to read this even more than this and if i could read this without reading this let me know because i'm really really excited for this the back says live fast die young tam hashford is tired of working in her local pub slinging drinks for world famous mercenaries and listening to bards sing of adventure and glory in the world beyond her sleepy hometown when the biggest mercenary band of all led by the infamous bloody rose rolls into town tam jumps at a sign to sign up as their bard it's a adventure she wants and adventure she gets as the crew embarks on a quest that will end one of two ways glory or death you don't understand how much i love quest fantasy and i haven't read a good one in so long it's time to take a walk on the wild side so like if you caught all the musical references it's because each book is inspired by 10 years of music this is inspired by 70s music and this is inspired by 80s music and the third book is going to be inspired by 90s music <laughs> um, and i don't know if that means that we're going to follow her children or like how that's going to work but i'm so excited for these i'm already talking so much and i only talked about one book next is one that i don't have that much to say just for the series title itself i'm going to read these books and that is the chronicles of the bitch queen series so we have the wolf of war and yarrow and then the ikasara falcon both by ks veloso when i finished sort of kai again and i was like this is my favorite book of the year i want more books with older characters that i can still not relate to but i can still enjoyably follow and a lot of people said to pick up the fifth season which i read and loved and also the wolf of war and yarrow which is about a queen whose husband abandons her and she has to take care of everything herself it says they call me the bitch queen the she wolf because i murdered a man and exiled the king the night before they crowned me oh so she exiled him i thought he left um years later he sends a mysterious invitation to meet italian journeys across the sea in hopes of reconciling their past but an assassination attempt quickly dashes those dreams stranded in a land she does not know with no idea whom she can trust italian will have to embrace her namesake i just love that i'm not going to read the synopsis for the second book just because it is following the same characters which means it is just going to have spoilers from the first book in there but i just love complicated family relationships like our main character having to struggle to keep peace and rule her kingdom even if all her subjects hate her i just already feel for her i'm just really excited to get to both of these next year and i'm pretty sure these are inspired by filipino mythology folklore correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's what i've heard okay i promise this is the last time i'm gonna talk about this series because i feel like i've just been talking about this series for a very long time and just not read it but it's time <laughs> it's trilogy by nk jemison i put this on so many i want to read lists but 
Um, I just feel like I'm really gonna love this and I don't know if I want to start it just yet because the first book is our March pick for my book club I don't know if I can wait that long though. Either way, I want to read all three of these If you watch all my videos, you're probably sick of me talking about this. I'm so sorry This is the last time I promise actually, you know what? I love talking about NK Jemisin on this channel So like I'm gonna talk about it again So I've read NK Jemisin's Broken Earth trilogy, which is just stunning and beautiful But the premise isn't something that I would have picked up if it wasn't NK Jemisin. It just didn't increase me the way this series does because this series and its premise really speaks to my soul I feel like we follow pantheon of gods it's interesting because this book doesn't have a synopsis anywhere I've just heard so many good things about this and people who've watched me talk about the broken earth trilogy I have all told me that I'm gonna love this even more it says gods and mortals power and love death and revenge she will unleash them all I just love following a good god story with politics and like gods are in a different playing field because they have so much more power at their disposal but like there's also so many more intricacies that I know NK Jemisin is going to explore and I'm just really excited like I said the first book I'm supposed to read in March but I also do want to read all the books number four is another one that I don't know too much about but after reading another book by this author I want to read her backlist and that is Trail of Lightning and Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Rowanhorse. I really like Rebecca Rowanhorse's writing in Black Sun. And I like a good urban fantasy. I like reading about books set in our world with magic. And I know this follows Navajo folklore and gods and monsters. And our main character is a monster hunter. And they're really short as well. I don't know if this is just two books. I don't know if this is like a duology. I doubt it. But I'm excited either way. These, How long are these? These are so short. Not even 300 pages. It just sounds so interesting. Interesting. It sounds like a good quest. I also love it. I forgot what it's called when like two opposite people usually solve murders and mysteries together That is one of my favorite tropes. They're finding a lost child. So it's not the same, but it just sounds so fun I'm so excited for both of these as well. I feel like I am running out of things to talk about this series is one of the oldest books I would say on my TBR and my physical TBR I feel like I've been meaning to read these for the longest time I put book one in my five star predictions video But since then I've heard that the first book is the weakest in the series So I think I'm gonna put the entire trilogy on my five star predictions and see which one I give five stars to But yeah, these covers are not my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. I wish there was something more Also, this is a signed edition, which I didn't even know I had but yeah, it's signed so like, I better like it. The back doesn't give you much. It says his wife taken, his people enslaved, driven by a longing for justice and the memory of lost love. Daryl will stop at nothing to bring down his enemies, even if he must become one of them to do so. So this is one of those infiltration. There are two groups of people on Mars, which is where this takes place. There's the silvers or the golds, golds I think, and then the reds. And the reds are subjugated. They are the poor working class and he's part of them. And he wants to take revenge on the golds, I'm assuming. So he infiltrates them and tries to take down the system from inside that's one of my favorite things as well so hopefully i like these these are not all the books there are also two more books in like a sequel series that have come out i want to read those as well these books aren't that big so i feel like i can get to them no problem okay last adult series before we get into ya and that is the assassin's apprentice series i've heard just a lot of great things but a lot of mixed things about this series so i don't know where i sit but i do want to try it out and this is an assassin story about our main character Fitz who is a bastard son of the prince and once his father abdicates he's taken in by his grandfather I think and trained to be an assassin and also I think Fitz can talk to animals so a lot of interesting things going on not gonna lie I'm more excited for the spin-off or maybe the sequel trilogy which is about ships that come alive and I'm just like so intrigued about that but <laughs> I can't read those without reading these so this is the last book on my TBR it says in a faraway land where members of the royal family are named for virtues they embody one young boy will become a walking enigma Fitz is a bastard cast out into the world friendless and lonely only his power the old art form known as the wit gives him solace but it is a reviled power and if used too often perilous when he's adopted by the royal household Fitz must surrender his old ways and embrace the new life one in which he must become a royal assassin I love a good assassin storyline this is the classic assassin storyline that apparently all assassin storylines are inspired by so I'm excited. So let's get into 
the four YA books. Okay, so like my only thing was that with all the books on the series, I was like, I cannot have started the books. So these are series that I want to start and finish next year. So it's not a series that I want to continue next year. And also like I need to have at least one of the books on my physical TBR because that's what I want to focus on this year. So the first book is one of the oldest. I think this is the oldest book that I still own from... Um, well, all of my really old books are at my house, not in my dorm. But I think this is the oldest book on my dorm and that is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I just think that this is something that I would really love. And as you can tell from the little tabs here, I've started reading it, but then I put it down. So I really want to pick it up again, just because I know there are two queens. I think the timeline is very skewed as well. I don't know if it's a linear timeline, but non-linear timelines really intrigue me. So it says two young women centuries apart hold the power to either save their world or doom it. So there's one sun queen, there's one blood queen, I think. And no one knows who is the sun queen, who is the blood queen. So it says, when assassins ambush her best friend, the crown prince, Riel Darien risks everything to save him, exposing her ability to perform all seven kinds of elemental magic. The only people who should possess this power are a pair of prophesized queens, a queen of light and a queen of blood. To prove she is the sun queen, Riel must endure seven trials to test her magic. If she fails, she will be executed unless the trials destroy her first. A thousand years later. So okay. So we're following a thousand years later, but like in the same book. And I know the characters like switch POVs. A thousand years later, the legend of Queen Riel is a mere fairy tale to bounty hunter Eliana Farakura. Bounty hunters. I love bounty hunters. <laughs> so I'm excited for her perspective. When the Undying Empire conquered her kingdom, she embraced violence to keep her family safe. Now she believes herself untouchable until her mother vanishes. To find her, Eliana joins a rebel captain on a dangerous mission and discovers that the evil at the heart of the empire is more terrible than she could have ever imagined. As Riel and Eliana fight the cosmic war that spans millennia, their stories intersect and the shocking connections between them all ultimately determine the fate of their world and of each other. I'm actually so hyped for this after reading this because I don't know why I put this down, um, but I love multiple points of view. I love generational, like different timelines where one of the characters has become a myth. That just sounds so interesting. Um, I love trials the trials that one character has to go through so like i feel like this is something that i really love and i know the trilogy just ended so now's the perfect time to pick it up me thinks all of these are just books that have been on my t-bear the longest so the next one is the dark days club by allison goodman and it says high society can be hell so like i love a good light historical fiction mystery secret society kind of series and i think this is what it is so it says lady helen rexall should be preparing for her debut at the royal court she should be attempting to secure a suitable marriage but something always told her she was destined for more so when her family's maid suddenly disappears one night helen goes in search of answers that's when she discovers two things there's an unearthly reason behind all the sinister activity in town and she's the focus of the dashing but mysterious lord carlton helen knows he could be trouble but he might also help her uncover the secrets surrounding her parents death can helen find truth in a man who is built in lies and how much is she willing to risk to really Realize her destiny. So this is a trilogy as well. And I think this is by the same author who wrote the Eon, like the dragon book. I haven't read that one either. This just sounds so interesting to me. I love, like I said, a good court politics, early 1800s. When is this? Yeah, 1812. I love good early 1800s Regency mysteries with secret societies and girls at the center of them because I love seeing women take back the power that they should have but they don't at this time period. So I'm really hyped for this one. I promise I have the first book of this somewhere but I just could not find it. And that is the Ace of Shades trilogy by Amanda Foodie. I feel like this is one that I've just been meaning to get to for so long and I just haven't. And this is, a lot of people have compared this to Six of Crows and I know it takes place in a gambling den and I know the main character is trying to find her mother. That's about it. I hope there's a lot of betrayal, a lot of backstabbing. You can't trust anyone. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from what I know about the book but also that's what I want in that book. So now I have high expectations. Let me see if I can find a synopsis. Okay so it says, Welcome to the city of Sid where casino families reign, gangs infest the streets, and secrets hide in every shadow. Anne Salta was raised as a proper young lady, and no lady would willingly visit New Reigns, the so-called city of sin. But when her mother goes missing, Anne must leave her finishing school and her reputation behind to follow her mother's trail to the city where no one survives uncorrupted. Frightened and alone, Anne only has one lead, the name Levi Glacier. Unfortunately, Levi is not the gentleman she expected. He's a street lord and a con man. I love him. He sounds like my kind of guy. I 
Yes, King. Con everyone. Levi is also only one payment away from cleaning up a rapidly unraveling investment scam, so he doesn't have time to investigate a woman leading a dangerous double life. Ant's offer of compensation, however, could be the solution to all his problems. Their search for clues leads them through glamorous casinos, illicit cabarets, and into the clutches of the ruthless mafia donna. As Ant unearths an impossible secret about her past, Levi's enemies catch up to them, ensnaring him in a vicious execution game where the players always lose. To save him, Anne will need to surrender herself to the city and she'll need to pay. That just sounds so good. I can't believe I've owned this for almost two years and I haven't read it. And the last series. Every time I hold this up, I feel sad. If you've seen my haul, you know that I got this this copy, this magazine-like copy of Ember in the Ashes, and I don't like it. But we're just gonna ignore that and talk about An Ember in the Ashes, which is the last series that I want to read next year. I can't look at it without being sad. The sticker that's like on the cover, you can't pick it up. It's fine. The first book, An Ember in the Ashes, was one of my favorite books of like 2015 when I first read it when it came out, and I've read it multiple times since then. It just has a lot of elements that I love. I haven't read it in the last two years, and I feel like my taste has changed, but I still think this is gonna be a series that I I really enjoy but I read Torch Against the Night it was very much a bridge book I feel like it dragged on nothing much happened till the end and the end was like explosive but I wanted the whole book to be that way at that time the third book had just come out and I heard that the ending was really sad and I knew that they hadn't even announced the fourth book if it was going to ever come out if she was not writing it what was going on and it just came out so like I'm glad I waited because if I read Reaper at the Gates I knew it was going to devastate me and if I had to wait two years ha no 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 so now that the series is over I want to binge it. I really love this book. I love, like I said, going undercover. I love kind of a tournament setting, like I said. Those are some surefire ways for me to love a book. But I felt like the second book didn't have that. It was a lot of traveling. The pace changed and got a lot slower, which is why I was just really disappointed. But I'm interested to see how I feel about it now. But yeah, those are the 10 books that I would really like to get to in the next year. I don't know if I'm going to do a reading vlog, reading all the books that I haven't read. Or I don't know if I want to do like a punishment situation if I haven't read the books. But I guess you will have to subscribe to find out why why am I like this? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. That's all I have for this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if they're on your TBR and how you feel about them, etc. etc. in the comments. All my links are down below as well as the subscribe button. And I post videos every Thursday and Sunday at 12 p.m. EST. So I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!